Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we're taking a look today at the HP Dragonfly Pro. This is a Windows PC, as you can see, powered by an AMD processor, and it's kind of nice for what it costs. So we're going to take a closer look at this in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $1399 as configured. This has a Ryzen 7 7736U processor. This is a newer chip from AMD but it's based on the Zen 3 Plus architecture. But as you'll see in a few minutes, it actually performs quite well. And they worked out a special arrangement with AMD to customize the power system on the laptops. So although the chip is not unique to HP, some of the ways they manage power is. And as a result, you don't have to set your Windows performance settings to get the most out of it. It will automatically tune for the best performance and balance the battery life out at the same time. What I have found in my testing is that the battery life on this is quite good for a PC. It's not quite up to the level that we're seeing with the M1 and M2 MacBooks, but it's getting up there. So I think if you're keeping the display brightness down and sticking to the basics, 11 to 12 hours is probably reasonable with this machine, but of course less if you're pushing it harder. And I didn't see any need to adjust any performance settings to get the most out of it like I usually have to do uh, with some of the laptops that we review here. Now this model is the base level configuration which has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. It's nice to see a base level start at 16 gigabytes versus 8. And I think for the target audience which are freelancers and other independent contractor types, I think this is going to be more than adequate at that base level but they do offer configurations with 32 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte of storage for a little more money. You cannot though upgrade any part of this machine. Everything is soldered down. So what you get is what you're gonna have for the duration of ownership. It has a 14 inch display. It looks pretty nice. It runs at 400 nits of brightness, but it's running only at 1920 by 1200. So you do have that 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is I think the better way to go for document editing and that sort of thing, but you will find higher resolution displays on many of its competitors that might look a little sharper. Uh, but overall, I think for the price point, uh, this display works pretty well. It is a touch screen as well, although it doesn't turn into a tablet. And this is about as far as the display will go down when you move it around. The nice thing though, is that it is very well balanced. So you can lift the display up here uh, with one finger and get up and running with it. Now the weight on this comes in at 3.53 pounds or 1.6 kilograms. It is a bit on the heavier side for a laptop of this size, but it feels nice and rigid and solid. It is made out of aluminum, most of it recycled. So it's got a good sturdy feel to it and you saw how balanced it was earlier. So I was pleased with the overall build here. The keyboard also feels very nice. It's got a good amount of travel to it. The keys are backlit, they're nice and large, and they're well-spaced, so I found it to be pretty nice to type on. You'll also see some special keys here on the side. This key can be programmed to do whatever you want, like load up a specific app or something like that. Over here, you've got a support key, and one of the features of this laptop, if you will, is that it comes with a 24-7 support structure, so when you push the key, you can chat with somebody who's been trained on providing support on this specific machine and get help whenever you need it. That will last a year. After that, they charge you $10.99 a month to extend it up to 36 months. And that includes an Apple Care like extended warranty. So if you have a problem with the computer, you can get support and get repairs going just by clicking that button there to get going there. And then you also have a screenshot button and a button here to zoom out your windows to check on everything. The trackpad is very nice on this, actually one of the nicer HP trackpads that I have encountered. This is one of these haptic trackpads that doesn't have a physical button. So when you click on it, you'll feel some pushback on your finger, but it's not actually moving. The only thing I had to do with this was adjust the amount of force that that click will deliver to you. The default one I thought was a little too weak, so I turned it all the way up to the maximum setting and it feels pretty good to me now. And what's nice about these haptic trackpads that you can click on them anywhere 
and register a click. So all in the uh, keyboard and trackpad functionality on this are pretty nice. It has a really nice webcam also. It shoots at 1440p at 30 frames per second max. Nice high resolution camera there. It should be very good for Zoom calls and everything else that you might do with it. It does not though shoot at 60 frames per second. So if you wanted to go to that frame rate, you still might need to attach something to it. But overall, a really nice webcam. There is though no manual shutter mechanism on this. So they do have a key to turn the camera off, which is down here, but it will not block the lens. So if you want to block the lens, you might still need to put your piece of tape over it. It's got a quad speaker system that sounds very nice. Not a lot of deep bass to it, but it can get pretty loud. And it's also very clear. So the sound is pretty nice on this, but of course you can also attach headphones to it if you want to go that route. Let's take a look at the ports here on the side. This one has two USB 4 ports here on the left hand side. And these are compatible with Thunderbolt 3 devices. This is the standard that Intel opened up. So external GPUs are possible on this. Other 40 gigabit per second Thunderbolt devices will work on this. And because these ports are full service, they can be used for power along with video output. And if you've got a docking station that's Thunderbolt compatible, it'll work on here as well. So lots of flexibility on the ports. On the other side here, you've got a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. So this is the slower of the three. And while you can still do power and video output through this, the data speeds are less. So if you've got a GPU or something that's Thunderbolt compatible, plug it into the left-hand side and your slower devices can go here on the right-hand side. I thought it would have made more sense to have all the ports be USB 4, but that's how they configured this one. But unfortunately, there's no headphone jack on this one. So when you attach those headphones, you'll have to do it over USB or Bluetooth. And there's also no card reader option either. Let's take a look now and see how this performs. So let's start off with some web browsing. And as you can see, it is pretty responsive here as we're browsing around the nasa.gov homepage. And all in, I found it to be performing as expected for a laptop of this class. And I think if you're doing a lot of basic stuff like this, you will uh, not feel any sluggishness at all as you're working with it. We also took a look at YouTube and played back a 1080p 60 video from my YouTube channel. And we did not experience any drop frames. Everything was equally responsive here as well. So I think for doing the basics like media consumption and web browsing and basic office tasks, I think the laptop here will perform quite well. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 223. And that puts this machine at the top of the list for all of the Ryzen devices that we have looked at recently. And we also did some video editing on it using DaVinci Resolve. This is a 4K 60 frames per second project. And as you can see, it was able to render transitions here in real time without any stutter or slowdown. So I think if you're doing some moderate video editing on here, it should be able to accomplish that task just fine. So let's take a look at some games now. This is Red Dead Redemption 2 running at the native resolution of the display, 1920 by 1200 at the lowest settings. We were able to sustain 30 frames per second almost all of the time, and occasionally it went into the 40s, which is pretty good for a computer lacking a discrete GPU. So all in, a very playable experience here with a very demanding AAA game. We also ran Fortnite, and this we also ran at the native resolution of the display, but we bumped things up to medium, and we were generally getting about 60 frames per second. There were times that it would dip below that. Uh, this game does have some variation in its frame rate depending on what you're doing in the game, but overall, uh, very fast and responsive gameplay with decent settings here uh, at the native resolution of the display. Not a gaming laptop, but uh, certainly a great way to casually game when you want to take a break from work. And on the 3D Mark Times by Benchmark test, we got a score of 2,512. And that puts this machine pretty much in line with some other recent Ryzen machines we've looked at with similar architectures. I also wanted to show you a score that I got on a gaming laptop from a few years ago. That one had a discrete GPU on board. And this machine, a couple years later, actually outperforms it and it consumes far less power. So it just shows you how far things have come in a short period of time. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 88.3%. 97% is passing on that test. And what that indicates is that if you place this computer under heavy sustained load, you will likely see a 10 to 12% performance reduction when it hits its thermal limits. 
and I suspect that that number will maybe improve as they continue to tweak this power system. But they really designed this machine for freelance workers who typically work in burstier kinds of sessions, which is why these are better suited for video editing and photo editing than they are for gaming, of course. This does have a fan on board, which will suck in air from the bottom here, so you want to keep the bottom clear. The fan is pretty silent most of the time, but if you're playing a game or running some video encoding or whatever, that fan will kick on, and it can get pretty noisy, but not as loud as a gaming laptop might be. So it doesn't sound like a wind tunnel, but you're definitely going to hear that fan running when you place the computer under load. But generally, doing a lot of the basic tasks that I've been testing on this machine over the last couple of days, I don't hear it come on at all. You might hear it come up a bit more when you first buy the machine because there's a lot of Windows updates that come down. And after those settle down, I think you'll have pretty silent operation here with pretty snappy performance. Now, one last thing to check out, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu 23.04 that came out the other day. Everything ran very nicely on it. However, it did not detect audio. So we did get the Wi-Fi working and the video and everything else came up, but no sound. And that might require a driver or something in the future to get working. So unfortunately, no audio on the Linux side. You will probably struggle a bit to get that going, but everything else seemed to perform quite well on this machine. But it's really built for Windows, and if you are someone who's looking for a decent work laptop, this one's very nice. I kept thinking as I was reviewing this that, boy, this is a very nice laptop. It's not groundbreaking necessarily, but it feels good. It performs well, and I like what uh, they're doing here with the power management. It feels pretty snappy, and uh, overall, there's not much to complain about here, and it's something that if you were looking for a simple laptop without a lot of options when you're purchasing, I think how they configured this even at the base level is decent for the price point. And although the display isn't all that high of a resolution, everything else on here is pretty darn good. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.